Hello, this is Elliot from Bravo Gaming, and I thought I will show you the very first large ship I ever created. I have since uh, renovated it with current updates, and um, yeah, I thought I think I'll show you. It is my first ship, so please bear in mind the design isn't great, but it has held its own in a couple of battles against some of my friends. So, without much ado, I'll show you my ship. There we are, this is the uh, RSF Illustrious. Um, I believe the code is um, like the IO, G, IO, G, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, something like 26R. Um, so, uh, Retrofit, I don't know. Anyway, it's got some sort of code. I can't actually remember. Actually, let's have a look at it. Um, oh, the IOG20 RM Star Escort, or the Illustrious. Um, I thought it'd just look cool if I had a proper name. So as it has, you see, I've sort of just cobbled together um, the updates into it. Um, if we look at the front of it, it is just a basic front ship. Um, doesn't look anything special. With It's six light. Uh, and five rocket launchers, which are all independently controlled, which is actually quite handy, so you can separate ten on and off. Um, it's got a very narrow body, but it has got armor, heavy armor plating in order to keep it together, which I found that as long as it's together, it tends to hold quite well in its own. It was several um, rocket launcher turrets on the top, which I tend to turn off because they tend to blow each other up, which is not necessarily a good thing. But I have got these, which can ter be turned on to auto fire, and I have shredded my ships, uh, my enemy, uh, enemy ships, my friend's ships, so much. Uh, and I've got two engine nacelles, which actually contain all my engines. So should these get shot off, which have actually been proven impossible, um, you know, you're better off actually shooting the engines off. Uh, then it will stop moving. It will not be able to be moved. It's like I said, it's only a basic design. This was my first ever ship before a lot of the um, updates came out. For example, the uh, armor slopes and stuff like that. Um, general RSF pattern, which is the white with the red trimmings, which is my signature colors. Uh, standard. Yes, yeah, so it's just a bog standard first ship. I never intended to build the ship as a really good looking ship rather than a functional ship that can be later upgraded so it looks better so I like to build my ships crappy at first and then have them so they look better over time and as I update them and upgrade them um, so yeah we'll go on the inside now uh, as you can see I've upgraded the hangar doors with the airtight pressure ones and just go onto my feet I can't so I've got oxygen tanks which are semi full and two oxygen generators which actually turn off because this is created mode and they just fill up and it just gets really frustrating to try to suck all the air back out again as you can see it is actually just a basic uh, roof I should actually have two heavy, harm, heavy armor plates right there but let's do that quickly now and uh, oh turns out it's light armor well that's not good then was, the idea was just to give it some extra protection sh sh Eh. Should the roof get shot off, these are still here. Uh, the front is actually pure bulk heavy armor, so you can't actually shoot through the front through into here. I will show you my small ship in a sec. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly um, close the uh, left hangar door and the right hangar door. I know like it says right, but the right control is that one, which is actually the right hand side of the ship. I know I've got it back to front, which can be a little bit confusing. Uh, and this is to repressurize the zone because uh, actually in here I've got it depressurizing as well so actually if I take yeah so if I close this and I repressurize the hangar bay so oxygen low and R to medium it does take a while because it's quite a large area but I can actually just take the helmet off right now um, Okay, it should have topped up, but yeah, so it is doing it. This is the, um, actually it's a good point, I can't remember what it's called. It's called Aberforth. Uh, it's the A2G2RM. Um, Aberforth. I built this originally with only one pod. It didn't have any of the heavy armor, it had nothing on it. It was literally just the uh, main body and one mist and one pod. 
Um, it had one Gatling gun on that side and a few of the thrusters on this side as well. Uh, and it was just going to be a standard civilian ship. But then I had since evolved it while I was in survival mode because most of my ships I designed in survival mode first and then bring them out. Um, not my large ships. Large ships I tend to design in creative mode. Uh, just basic straight away. But, um, yeah, and then I add the rocket pods, um, extra nacelle, two Gatling guns. It actually flies incredibly well, surprisingly. Like, I've gone up against some of my other fighters, like actual specifically designed fighters, and this just outlasts them. It's like, people will shoot the um, nacelles on this. I hope that was a bit of a glitch there. And they just... Yeah, I've got an, a spare nacelles. And, like... It just it's an all round really good. It's very tight packed. Everything inside is very jam packed full of gyroscopes. I believe I've got three. I'm not gonna give too many details away because obviously if I ever have to come up against you guys um online I don't want you to be able to suddenly quickly destroy me. <laughs> um yeah, this tends this has actually been my main bulk ship. I have actually designed a new fighter class bulk ship, um, based on the Jedi Starfighter, the uh the ace version, so the smaller one you see in episode 3 right at the beginning with Anakin and Obi-Wan. Um, it's very loosely based on there, I should say. Um, yeah, so I've, I've always been very happy with the ship. However, I was a little miffed about it, because um, I named it after Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth, hence Aberforth. Um, but I've been watching a Let's Play by done by um, Last Stand Gamers with Aaron. I'll put the description in below. And he's got a ship which he's very proud of called Henry. And it looks very similar. And the only difference is, actually, see, he's got an extra Gatling gun down there. As the missile pods are slightly different. He doesn't have this slant like I do. And he has, um, it actually looks more like a helicopter than mine does. Mine looks a little bit more like a puddle jumper out of Stargate. Um, a little bit, I should say. <laughs> Not really. So they're actually very similar design. Um, and that's just really frustrating. As you can see, uh, direct um, port, because I tend to only put like one fuel, and I've never actually gone through that, but it's nice should I run out of power that I can just easily top it in and not worry about it. And of course, access to um, other Gatling guns and small cargo containers, which are really helpful and useful. Uh, I've yet to work out how to get oxygen going from the cargo containers, such as oxygen bottles stored within there, to actually put it through the um, cockpit. So that's not really oxygen compatible just yet, I guess. So we'll go into the airlock. Um, like I said, this is an older design. I quickly put this in here. And of course the new airlocks are... Um, take that off. Um, the new airlocks I now design are just two straight away. So there's no room for air to get into it. So I don't actually need one of these. I just shook the camera. You probably got a bit uh, freaked out a little bit there. Um, so yeah, and of course this one, like I said, I retrofitted this just to support the air. I'm going to close everything off. Um, yeah, uh, This is actually uh, just a long tunnel and of course it's all light armour. Like, there's no um, interior plates or heavy armour, which actually turned out to be a bit frustrating. This I'll actually get onto in a second. Um, in fact, I need to rig this up so it actually works. Um, let's see, where's my... Um, Timer block. And, uh, check it out. Oh, start. That should probably see. Oh. Yeah, it does work. So this. Why are you not working? There we go. Um, yeah, I'll get onto that in a sec. It's kind of, sort of important why I've got that going. Um, oh, my frame rate's just dropped through the floor. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this is a medical bay. This is before you could take your, he um, your hammer off without using a medical bay. Like I said, like, most of this was designed before a lot of the updates come out, and, of course, I it's just so difficult to keep up to date. Like, currently, the update that's just come out was the um, chiropods, which I do not currently have in place, and I probably won't, because this is fine. Um, I need to get a light in here, which I've yet to do. But it's just a medical bay where you can respawn. Uh, this side, I believe, is... Yeah, it's just a secondary airlock um, to get into the side. So should the front end be blocked off, you can't get in. You've got the secondary outside airlock. But you can see how thick these walls are. It's actually kind of difficult to get through. The actual main engine bay, which I'm not actually going to talk about too much. Um, 
I just let you know that my ship, all my ships have redundancy or contingency programs built in place. So should like all my reactors be blown, uh, it can still move. Um, it's still got more than enough power to supply it, and it can still move around and attack you. So just knocking out my engine, um, my main reactor base just isn't going to cut it. But all right, we're going to go up to the main bridge now, which I'm a little concerned about showing you guys. Uh, here is actually the, uh, down there is actually one of the uh, airpods. I just didn't know where to fit it. Uh, so I put it there and just blocked it off with some grates. And um, I never, I'll show them in a sec. Another issue was the, uh, ooh, just ship editor. Yeah, so this is where I generally just design and edit my ships, this world. It's a secondary uh, side control room. Uh, generally for like, there is actually docking controls, uh, extendable docking clamps and stuff. And I've got one on the other side. They can also control the um, missile turrets. Um, yeah. So I've got a fair amount of windows. This is actually something I was sorting out there. This is, uh, I can't remember who the mod author was. Um, basically he created a uh, C++ coding. That enables you to see pretty much everything you want from oxygen tank to event hallways and even the power consumption. Um, which you can see the power output's changing and I've got a battery <laughs> status um, which are currently non-operational because I have no use for them. I have more than enough uh, power basically to supply the ship with, yeah, so as you can work it out now, I've got a supply of um, backup ba um, generators just in case the uh, reactors do go. So like, you can tell you the pressure, for example, if I depressurize, um, let's get into this, depressure, we really want the um, airlock, event, bridge, engine bay, there we go. Hang on, let's turn out the hangar, so let's go depressurize that room. So what will happen is that that's the, the air vents going down for every second that will update and then of course that will be going up as well. Um, I've just pointed at the screen so you wouldn't necessarily see what I've just been doing. I've just been pointing at the screen to try and show you. Um, yeah, so this is actually really useful. What I'll do is I'll try and find the mod author and I'll shove his um, uh, his uh, mod um, in my descriptions below so you can have a look. I've since then saved it so I don't actually need the mod to go in with me but I've since saved it um, under, under my own thing but I'm definitely giving him the whole credit. I can code but I can't code this complex within C sharp I believe. Um, I can generally code in C++, um, VB, you know the basic ones and a bit of Java but this is beyond me. So this is a nice open bridge of design like windows everywhere um, you still see later design. I've since then um, just started to try and design my ships so they've got double protection. So if you shoot through one window, they'll be fine. And my even newer ships are using the um, the airtight anchor doors just to close off. So it just as soon as it detects uh, depressurization, they just close off automatically. That's a bit of coding I've been working on myself. Um, oh, there seems to be a bit of a glitching within the uh, panels there. That's that's not normal there, it's probably because I'm uh, recording this and my frame rate's like really low. So this, uh, I have actually got a lower back one just in case these all get blown out. Um, that's because I had a fight with my friend and his ship is actually designed for war. This is not designed for battle. This is purely an exploration vessel. And I know it sounds really silly, but it really is. Oh, that's one of my... Um... Yeah, I've, I should probably shouldn't have shown that. <laughs> so this is um, the main ship itself. As you can see, it's like... It's a semi-curved um, bottom. I tried to like, keep some harsh edges on it because it just looks more realistic. Um, so all these uh, rocket pods actually correspond in the lake area. So this will be actually how I control but I've currently got no rocket pods. So if I go and click number two, that will turn on my le my port side, my left-hand side rockets. And they shoot out like so many of them. And I could turn that off or uh, front ones. Yeah, so you can't really hear it because it's not close enough to us. Um, but it is shooting and the frame rate, uh, it's just, not, there we go, flashing there. It can shoot fr directly from the front. Ooh. Okay, there eventually. So number four is also this side. I can actually have all of them working together, which I've not needed to do just yet. And of course five, I can turn them on and off. So I can have them shooting uh, small aircraft. The, I've turned off their automatic um, movement because it just ruins the frame rate and they just look better when they don't move around so much. Anyway, so I've got that turn 
I normally have that turned off so it doesn't just randomly attack so I can choose when to attack. Uh, here's something really cool I'm really happy about is my um, docking base. I can um, I can resupply by sending these out. And the, the trick was to try and get it so it works and still hold... Um, Yeah, so I thought, I thought that was a bit of damage to my ship. Um, yeah, so they still hold uh, pressure within the ship. Because, like I said, this ship was originally not designed to have pressure. Um, and, of course, I've got my batteries uh, recharged on and off. And I can close all my doors. Literally, all my doors will not be open. Uh, so I can quickly repressurize so many parts of my ships. It's sort of like a redundancy. And they obviously, to lock and unlock are there. So, one, two. Alright, so this is... Um, the RSF Illustrious, it actually accelerates not too bad, it's not the f my fastest ship, but it, it, oh I bet, I should probably close the, um, let's quickly do that, so they're closing, um, it actually moves, so I'm now showing you a ship I don't particularly want to be showing you, because it's unfinished, it's, it's basically going to be based upon the Acclimator class um, starship out of Star Wars, um, because I was going to do Halo style ships now, but my friend had kept that, nicked that design and I really can't be designing ships exactly the same as him so that's a little bit frustrating anyway so that's the RSF Illustrious um, the RSF um, is my fleet it's called the Royal Space Force um, I'm not making myself king I just think it looks good and hence red and white I hear it hit a bit of English a bit of Assassin Creed -y as well um, yeah I, the ships turned out all right um, it's, it's certainly held its own in a fight better than my other ship, my other large ship I've created. Um, I don't tend to build a lot of ships because um, when I design them, I take time and I get, I end up uh, getting a losing heart for it, and I do something else, such as carry on with my survival mode. Um, oh, we're about to go into a non-pressurized area because uh, I forgot to repressurize as quickly. Nah, let's keep it unpressurized because we're about to leave the hangar anyway. Do I show off my upper fourth? Um, I will uh, be showing my fighters next, um, the generational of my vipers as well, my very, very, very first fighter class. Uh, so this is no oxygen, let's quickly open these doors. So these are really handy. Um, there's a little bit of denting floor, this is all light armour. So actually, this would not last very long in, um, if it's doing a lot of ship control. As you can see, it accelerates so nicely. Lights are on, let's turn them off. Uh, and I've zoomed out. Well, as you can see, it's for me this this is such an amazing ship to fly. Um, I could just handle so well. It looks a little bulky, but it shoots two rockets at a time, or Gatling guns, which I tend to use a lot because the rockets can miss, but the Gatling gun can just wear away at the enemy or oh, my friends. Actually, so this is the RSFR. Ah. I'm a fourth. Normally, I've I've started just removing the um, name of the ships, uh, apart from my big battleships. The only ships I've been keeping there are the um, yeah. So I've been removing the names of the ships off my uh, fighters because I just think if we're gonna have bulk fighters, that having so many names, it's just gonna be really frustrating. I've been really gentle. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, so these some are. So yeah, this this is um, the RSF Illustrious and the Abforth, and um, my two first ships. Well, my first, yeah, um, yeah. My name's been Elliot. Um, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or any suggestions, please leave comments in below, and of course, please subscribe. See ya.